No cheating. Do not skip to the end right now in the comments. Tell me how much this car is going to weigh. So the 944 was a fairly light car by today's standards when it was new, maybe 1300 or so kilograms. By the time we got to the S2, the late 80s model, maybe 14, maybe 14, 40 kilograms dry. But this is a unique car. It's barely got any interior, no seats and loads of other bits missing in there. It's got no transaxle, no torque tube and no engine. That's got to add a lot of weight. I'm going to put my pin in just over a thousand kilograms. Let's pick a number, 1,015 kilograms. I hope it's lighter. Let me know what you think. Well, it definitely isn't an even surface. Hey everyone, I'm Josh and welcome back to the Porsche EV project. This week, we're going to weigh the car. We're still waiting for parts to come in, but something I really wanted to do, other than wash it, like last time, is to weigh it. Now, I wasn't going to spend £3,000 on some actual scales to weigh the car. That's crazy. The car cost 1500 quid. But what we're going to do is we're going to use some bathroom scales. In fact, four sets, £10 each off Amazon, and try and get an approximate measurement for the weight of the car. So wish me luck. Let's do this. This is our equipment for weighing the car. At the back here, got some chipboard that I've sliced up into fairly unevenly shaped blocks, but hopefully that will do. Then here we've got four scales. I think they were 10 or maybe even eight pounds each from Amazon. They came with batteries. I couldn't find them at first, but now I have. And then at the back here, some plate steel. We only need one of these plates and we're gonna put it centrally over four of these, making sure that the readouts are somewhere we can see them and measure the weight of each corner of the car. Now these wooden blocks are to try and pack up the other corners of the car so that we're kind of flat. We're not looking for, you know, gram level precision or even kilogram level precision, but we're just aiming to get somewhere close. Let's see how it goes. That looks like a bit of Porsche on the floor to me. Must be that uh, busted rear light. Here we go. Ah. Let's stop. No. So we're gonna raise up the jack and move it into position. I've got some chocks behind the rear wheels. So this is where we're aiming for, guys. Raise up the car. Uh. Always looks easier when people do this on YouTube. I guess they just speed up the video. I think this is the incline. So if we look over here, big gap, small gap. Uh, probably not even a big enough gap yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and position stuff underneath this so that we have like an even gap. So the surface really isn't even. Um, it would be much better in the garage where it's flat, but there isn't enough room in there for me to get from one side of the car to the other because the garage is insane and tiny. So what we're left with is four scales. I think that's about 720 kilograms. They're each rated to 180 kilograms and we're trying to distribute the weight across it with this metal pad. The angle isn't gonna help and I'm gonna have to take a photograph of these values really quickly. 70, 34, and then on the other side, we've got 42 and 22. Where does this bolt come from? Just found it on the floor. The garage here is mental. It's from a bygone era when vehicles were smaller and you basically can hardly get around one side of the car, but it's preferable to outside. I feel like we've got a three or four degree slope in multiple axes outside. And it's just, I'm not confident in that 170 kilogram measurement. I'll be more confident if I get the same measurement in here. So I'll do both the front uh, on both sides. I've got enough room, I think. And then the rear on the driver's side, UK, right hand side. And then the other side, we're just going to double up the weight and see where that gets us. If it gets us to like 600 kg, I think the system hasn't worked. Um, but hopefully with an error of probably 100 or 50 kg, we will get somewhere. Let's get to it. Go. Moment of truth, guys. So we got 18, we got 105, we got 53.2, and we've got zero? Zero? So we've got 101, got 19, got 51, 
and we've got four. Okay, so after all that, we are getting a different reading, maybe 174, 175, whereas it's 168, 170 outside. Not a massive difference, but let's get the other corners done and see where we're at. Risky late in the day move here. I've got to go home. I've got twins to look after. So because the other side was so light and these are each rated for 180 kgs, I haven't just put one. I've put three under rather than four. So uh, let's see what happens. So we've got 41. We've got 58. And over here, we've got 72. Okay, guys, moment of truth. What have we got on the rear? Let's have a look. So we've got... 92.9, 41.55, and 104.3. That's around there, 104.3. Well, no, 104.2. So on the rear, we're looking at 240-ish. So although I only had a couple of minutes, I managed to weigh that driver's side rear corner. It came out 240 kilograms. All these weights just seem light to me. I don't know why, but maybe it's because I drive a car that weighs 2.3 tons. So if we multiply that out across the axle, because I couldn't get to the other side this time, we're talking about 480 or give or take half a ton across the rear axle, which maybe sounds a bit more feasible. But we've still got those really light weights at the front where we were getting, say, 180, so 360 across the front. And that gives us a total of like 840 kilograms for the car and that sounds really really light to me but then it was a 1400 kilogram car it doesn't have the engine it doesn't have the transaxle doesn't have the fuel tank and it doesn't have the torque tube and a bunch of other ancillary items and it doesn't have the driver's and passenger seat and half of the dashboard maybe that does weigh that much so i'm gonna have a look tonight and probably ask chat gbt to see if we can work out whether maybe around 850 kilograms is really the weight of the car as it stands. So in a couple of weeks, I'll hopefully put together a video totaling up the car's weight from our totally janky bathroom scale setup. Spoiler, by some miracle, it might actually be in the ballpark. With the support of my brilliant editor, Tom, I'm aiming to ramp up to an episode every couple of weeks, throwing in unboxings, budget progress, and even some AI wizardry to cover up the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing with this whole wrenching thing. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for watching the videos. I really didn't expect more than a handful of people to watch these. It's been fantastic to see that, the likes and the subscriptions, and then most of all the comments. There's people that are working on their own EV projects and people that even work on commercial EV projects, commenting, offering assistance and tips. And that really just makes me feel amazing. Like I'm not alone in this crazy endeavor. And that there's this whole community out there trying to do similar things. It made me so confident, in fact, that I reached out to one of my favorite YouTube channels, the Electric Supercar channel. And the guy that runs that, Jeremy, uh, he's sort of like a, a hero of mine. He's already started a company where he's going to be converting EVs for other people. He's created EVs in the past. And right now, he's working on this awesome Cayman project where he's taking that Cayman. He's giving it an electric drivetrain. He's building the battery boxes, but he's also going to be working on the styling of the car to really make it an electric supercar. So I didn't really think that he would get back to me for a conversation. And he has agreed to have a chat with me. So I will let you know how that goes. But I think, you know, just a few minutes talking to this guy is really going to inspire me and increase my confidence that it is actually possible to create this car. <laughs>